Hello, welcome to the morning news. Our top story takes place in Cuba and the U.S. Both countries have officially resumed diplomatic relations after reopening their embassies. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez is already in Washington to preside the ceremony. The Cuban flag will be raised for the first time in 54 years. Many differences remain between both nations as the U.S. continues to illegally occupy Guantanamo naval base and maintains an arbitrary blockade against the island nation. The measure has been widely condemned by the United Nations General Assembly the last 23 years. Many U.S. officials agree with the U.N.'s resolution. The United States was isolated. We were the only country in the hemisphere that didn't have normal diplomatic and trade relations with Cuba. Uh, it, it, it was an embarrassment. And every year in the UN General Assembly, the United States was sharply criticized for its embargo. In Cuba, the U.S. government has preparations on the way to reopen its embassy, but the U.S. flag will not fly over the embassy in Havana until U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry visits to preside over this official ceremony sometime in August. Kerry is scheduled to meet with the Cuban Foreign Ministry in Washington this Monday. The U.S. State Department will add a Cuban flag in its lobby among those of other countries with which Washington has relations. More in Latin America in the following roundup. The left-wing FARC rebels of Colombia have released a soldier they had held for nearly two weeks. The move came a day before the insurgents began their second unilateral ceasefire since December. They called on the government to do the same, but it has only agreed to de-escalate military operations. The FARC handed over Christian Moscoso to the International Red Cross. The soldier had been captured during combat near the country's southeastern border with Ecuador. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos said Moscoso was in good condition. The soldier's family expressed joy at his release. It happened. They gave us the news. The joy, as you can see, as the kids here say, my entire expression changed. The entire family is very happy. We thank God above all for Christians' freedom. Tens of thousands of people across Nicaragua took to the streets to commemorate the 36th anniversary of the Sandinista Revolution. In 1979, the armed movement succeeded in toppling the U.S.-backed dictatorship of the Somoza family, which had controlled the country for 40 years. The Sandinista government faced thousands of violent U.S.-sponsored counter-revolutionary attacks and widespread human rights violations. We have heard the howling of a representative of the most reactionary sectors of the empire, a candidate of the Republican Party. Donald Trump is rallying against the peoples of our America, ranting against our Mexican brothers. Our solidarity with the people of Mexico and the peoples of our America against the outrages of the imperialists. In Uruguay's capital, Montevideo, the marijuana cup was held, with the prize going to the best crop of the drug. Over 120 competitors participated with about 170 different samples of marijuana. Each participant was to hand in five grams of marijuana they cultivated or one gram of the extract, which is used for medicinal purposes. Marijuana was legalized in Uruguay in 2013. The measure was proposed by former President Jose Mujica. The legalization has improved the quality not only because it's better, but also because it's healthier. As people in the mountainous region north of Culiacán in the northwestern Mexican state of Sinaloa celebrated Joaquín El Chapo Guzmán's escape from jail just over a week ago, new evidence of his jailbreak surfaced. The Ministry of Defense reported that it had intelligence data that proved motion sensors had been turned off many months ago at the maximum security jail El Chapo escaped from. Federal authorities also said five intelligence officials had been detained in connection with the escape of the world's most powerful and most wanted drug lord. Despite massive 10,000-man force being deployed to find Guzman, there is no indication of where he might be found.
Police violence in the United States continues. Witnesses in Stonewall, Mississippi, have told investigators that Jonathan Sanders, an unarmed black man, was strangled to death after he was held in a shock hold by a police officer for more than 20 minutes in early July. Hundreds took to the streets to protest the unjustified death at the hands of a white police officer. So far, there are three matching testimonies of witnesses against police officer Kevin Harrington. The attorney for the victim's family said that autopsy reports confirmed Sanders was strangled to death. There are mixed feelings in Greece regarding the debt deal with the European Commission and the Central Bank. But there is hope that the government of Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras uh, will root the economy to growth. The Greek banks reopened after three weeks of uh, shutdown by the government as a measure to avert a crash in the banking system. But capital controls enforced since the EU the 29th will remain in place. Most Greeks blame the EU for the problems that the country is facing. In Yemen, civilians continue to be the main victims of a war. At last, 57 people were killed Sunday when the Saudi-led coalition bombarded Yemen's second city of Aden against Shiite rebels. The bloodshed came two days after Prime Minister Khalid Beha declared the city to be liberated. Among the fatalities were 12 children and six women. Since the beginning of the Saudi led air strikes on March 26th, over 3,200 people have been killed, mainly civilians. Apart from 21 million people calling for humanitarian aid, others are urging arms. Pope Francis said the Vatican will contribute to Latin America's fight for equality and development. He told thousands outside uh, his balcony at St. Peter's Square that he thanked God uh, for allowing him to recently visit Ecuador, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Pope Francis's next international voyage will be to Cuba and the United States in September. In Havana, he will meet with Cuban President Raul Castro and may also meet with former leader Fidel Castro. The pontiff uh, will then go to the United States where he is scheduled to address Congress. I ask the Lord that the Spirit of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, guide me during the apostolic journey that I made in recent days in Latin America and that allowed me to visit Ecuador, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Brazilian extraordinary football player Ronaldinho is in the news again. He is a 35 now and will be leaving Mexico where he has played for almost a year after a highly successful career in Europe. He has a 17-month contract with the Fluminense Football Club. The Moroccan Stadium award with touring fans are welcoming him back to the country. Ronaldinho expressed a high hopes to make history. He will seek to add another title to his career. The striker has one World Cup title, two Libertadores Cup, a Champions League, and a Spanish League title. He also won a championship title in Italy. More on these on our website, Elizabeth TV.net, Lash English. Thanks for watching and have a good day.